Hello my friends, this is Sandor Hunter from Amnor Hunter Studios and I'm really happy uh, to be uh, starting this new section of my video tutorials on my channel. Uh, we're going to, to go deep on the mixing music subject. Uh, this is the first video of this series and I'm really happy to be sharing this, uh, this knowledge with you. Uh, knowledge that I have been collecting uh, from like one one year and a half uh, of studying this on, on my own here uh, on the internet and I humbly uh, tell you that that I owe all this knowledge to some people on the internet uh, thanks to them I am I know what I know about the subject and I have put in practical uh, all of this so I am really sure that it's going to help you a lot and uh, make make uh, better mixes for your music uh, as it helped to me it, it will help you I'm, I'm really sure of it there's no doubt about it so uh, in this first video uh, before diving into the details of mixing itself we need to look at some properties of sound in general uh, this section is uh, background information but it is necessary to understand its content in order to grasp a lot of the basic principles of mixing. Uh, let's start with the most basic here, the sound. What is the sound? The sound is a pressure wave traveling uh, through the air. Any action which puts air into motion will create a sound. Our auditory system systematically groups the pressure waves that hit our ears into distinct sounds for ease of processing. And much how our vision groups the photons that hit our eyes into objects. Uh, but just, just like our vision can divide visual objects into smaller objects, for example a person can be divided into arms, legs, head, our brains can analytically divide sounds into smaller sounds. And if you continue to subdivide physical objects into smaller and smaller pieces, you will eventually arrive at atoms, which cannot be further subdivided. And there is a similarly indivisible, indivisible unit uh, of sound that is called the frequency. The frequency is the smallest, smallest part of a sound. Uh, all sounds can ultimately be reduced to a bunch of frequencies and the difference is that where an object may be composed of billions of atoms a sound typically consists of no more than thousands of frequencies so frequencies are a very practical way of analyzing the sound in an everyday context of electronic music and responding to the question what is a frequency a frequency is simply a sine wave shaped disturbance in the air is an oscillation in other words they are typically considered in terms of the rate at which they oscillate uh, they are measured in cycles per second and this is the hertz which uh, which we uh, know as hertz and its abbreviation is hc now the science uh, tells us that the human ear, as a human ear, can hear frequencies in the approximate range of 20 hertz to 20,000 hertz. Though many people seem to be able uh, to hear uh, more further in both directions. In any case, this range of 20 hertz to 20,000 hertz uh, encompasses all of the frequencies that we commonly deal with in our day-to-day -day lives, and different different frequencies sound different uh, and have a different effects on the human psyche uh, there is a continuum of changing flavor as you go across the frequency spectrum uh, for example 60 hertz and 61 hertz may may sound more or less the same to you but by the time you get up to the 200 hertz range you are in quite different territory indeed so uh, let's start by analyzing this uh, this uh, range from 20 Hz to 10 to 20,000 Hz. I have here recorded uh, 
a recording of a piano and a bass. Uh, if I zoom zoom in this, you can you can see the the waves of the sound, which were uh, converted to the digital by the software. So this is the the waves of the sound. And let, let's listen, for example, the, the bass here. Okay, so there's, there's the bass. To analyze the frequencies, I'm going to use an equalizer. This is a, an equalizer. Uh, here I have the range from 20 Hz to 20,000 Hz. And I have the, the decibels here on my left from minus 24 decibels to up 24 decibels. So starting with the range from 20 Hz to 40 Hz, which is called the subsonics. Uh, these frequencies residing in the extreme of human hearing are almost never found in music because they require extremely high volume levels to be heard, particularly if there are other sounds playing at the same time. Even then, they are more felt than heard. Most speakers cannot reproduce them. That said, Subsonics can have a very powerful mental and psychical effect on people. Even if the listener isn't aware that they are being subjected to them, they can experience uh, feelings of uh, knees, uh, nausea and pressure on the chest. Uh, subsonic can move air in and out the lungs at a very rapid rate, which can lead to shortness of breath. Uh, for example, many horror movies uh, use uh, this this uh, range to create feelings of fear and disorientation in the audience. So uh, this is the the range from 20 hertz to 40 hertz. So let's check it out how you, how you can hear it in a bass. So this is 20 hertz. The only thing that you, all of, all of this has been cut out for this uh, filter, low pass filter. So this is what it is, uh, this range in a base. As you notice, it's really almost impossible to hear. You have to to pump up the volume uh, so you can hear, and it's more uh, felt than what you can hear about it. Okay, so uh, moving on to the range of the 20 hertz to 40 hertz. Uh, this uh, frequency uh, marks the beginning of a musical sound. And it is what most people think of when they think of bass. It accounts for the deep booms of hip hop and the hefty power of a kick drum. These frequencies are a full body experience and carry the weight of music. Music lacking in sub bass will feel lean and wimpy, and music with an excess of sub bass will feel bloated and bulky. So let's check it out. Okay, so uh, there's not really a lot of difference uh, audible from the from the past uh, range. Uh, we needed also a lot of volume to to listen to it. And moving on, the next range is called the bass. Uh, 
it is from the 100 hertz to 300 hertz still carrying a hint of the feeling of the sub bass range and this frequency range evokes feelings of warmth and fullness it is body stability and comfort it is also the sort of the impact of the drums and absence of uh, these frequencies make music feel cold and uneasy and excess of these frequencies make music feel muddy and indistinct so let's check it out Okay, so, so there it is, the range from 100 to 300 hertz. Uh, this is a very, very musical also range. So the next, the next range is called the lower mid range, and it is from the 300 hertz to the 1000 kilohertz. So this frequency range is rather neutral in character. It serves to anchor and stabilize the other frequency ranges. Without it, the music will feel, will feel pinched and unbalanced. So let's listen to it. Another way of analyzing this, the this fre this uh, frequencies might be to do the opposite. Instead of this, This is uh, what we're hearing. Uh, let's jump up to the piano to check it out. So, for example, this is from the one thousand hertz and on. this is that we can exaggerate the 1000 hertz for example with some filters like this This is the, the, the frequency range. Uh, moving on, the next uh, range is called the upper mid range, and it's uh, from the 1000 Hz to 8000 Hz. These frequencies attract attention. The human, e uh, the human ear is quite sensitive in this range, and so it is likely to pay attention to whatever you put in it. These frequencies are presence, clarity, and punch. An absence of upper mid-range makes uh, music feel dull and lifeless. An excess of upper mid-range makes uh, music feel piercing, overbearing, and tiring. So let's check it out. 1000 to 8000 hertz. So 
saturate some frequencies right there. Okay, and let's do the opposite. So uh, moving moving on to the last uh, range, uh, that is from the 8,000 hertz to 20,000 hertz, it is called a treble, uh, another extreme in the human hearing range. These frequencies are detail, sparkle, and sizzle. An absence of treble makes music feel muffled and boring. An excess of treble makes music harsh and uncomfortable to listen to. These frequencies, by the presence of absence or absence make music exciting or relaxing. Music that is meant to be exciting such as dance music contains large amounts of treble. Music that is meant to be relaxing contains low amounts of treble. As people age they gradually lose their ability to hear frequencies in this range. So let's check it out. and you start to lose the, the sound right there uh, maybe it's me maybe, maybe I cannot hear, I don't know if you guys can hear yeah, you hear a little bit right there so let's exaggerate this frequency for example the 20 thousand this is like a sparkle and sizzle and all the shine of the piano Okay people, so there you have it, this is the first tutorial uh, we needed to, to, to go deep also into this, uh, this subject, this elemental information. So thank you very much uh, for your attention in this first tutorial, uh, don't forget to subscribe, to share the video, to uh, like, like my page on Facebook, to follow my guitar solo project on Twitter or Instagram. Um, there, there are a lot of videos uh, coming up. Uh, this uh, first video might, might, might seem to you a little bit boring because uh, there's not much action of mixing, but uh, we need to understand this first in order for you to understand the other concepts and things that we're going to be uh, uh, learning in, in these uh, tutorials. So thank you very much for your time. I really appreciate it, my friends. Uh, stay tuned and take care. Have a great day or night. Bye. See you.